Hi, everybody. Hi. All right. Uh, this is a test drive a browser game with JavaScript. Um, so I'm so uh, I'm Zach. Uh, this is uh, this is Todd. Uh, Justin uh, will be along shortly. Uh, we all work for uh, well. Uh, uh, we all work for Test Double. Uh, Todd and Justin are the co-founders. Uh, Todd, would you mind just giving a brief, like, like let everybody know what, what Test Double is? Yeah, so uh, Test Double we started two and a half years ago, um, largely because we wanted to prioritize developer happiness above all other things. Uh, so that's what we've been trying to do. Uh, we've been trying to find uh, basically, clients who like working with us have hard problems um, and value elite developers who, who kind of work on uh, with a level of craft. So that's why we got started. Um, you know, whether you guys are potential clients or candidates or whatever, we'd love to talk to you more. Even if it's you know not in a, a selling relationship as a consulting company or as a, a potential job. You know, we like to interact with people, help them get over the hump, and get better about testing JavaScript. So feel free to reach out. Uh, what are we? You can email us at hello at testdouble.com if you ever want to get in touch. That'd be a good thing to put on a slide, I suppose. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> All right. Uh, so this is so here's the the general shape of the workshop. Uh, we're just gonna briefly cover why you might care about JavaScript. Um, we're, then we'll set up and and pair up, and then uh, we'll have a, a, a I guess more of a code along session. So. Uh, I'll type some stuff on the screen and then give everybody time to catch up and then we'll cut the pairs loose and check in every 25 minutes or so. Uh, so uh, quick poll, how many people in here uh, are, are, would consider themselves comfortable with JavaScript and testing it? Okay, cool. No, no, this, it's, it's about the ratio I'm used to seeing. Um, how many in here are uh, have used uh, a f uh, some kind of framework in anger and in, in production uh, yeah right okay uh, so ho um, how many of those hands are backbone okay how about angular how about ember couple okay okay so just pretty even distribution okay so we're gonna uh, we're gonna use angular to um, to update the DOM today, but uh, it's kind of more of a detail. It's not the, the core principle of the workshop. Um, so first of all, why JavaScript? Um, so everybody's, you know, everybody is here, everybody signed up, so I'm, I'm assuming you're not going to take too much convincing, but I uh, just wanted to go over a few of the styles I see in, in projects that, um, that I often inherit from, from uh, uh, from other people, like the different styles of JavaScript, uh, and this is this is kind of the default style, I think, is uh, absolutely zero JavaScript uh, in a Rails app, right? Uh, nothing comes out. No, no, no. This never happens. There's always JavaScript. Uh, no JavaScript means uh, that it, it, it's it's a it's a swampland and it's completely unmanageable because it wasn't wasn't really planned. Uh, we kind of forget that that's code too, uh, and and uh, I've, I've done this before, too. Um, yeah, it, it all just goes in the same file, uh, slowly pile it up. And the bottom line is, uh, when we treat JavaScript like that, when we forget that it's code just like Ruby, it, it absolutely sucks. So our first goal here is to mitigate pain. It's to relieve the pressure from anybody that's uh, uh, feeling the suckage from uh, the suckage. That's a word. <laughs> Very technical. Um, to, to relieve the suckage from the jQuery swamps. Uh, so this is, uh, this is a style um, that I'm starting to see more often, that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, talking with some developers here at RailsConf, uh, they've kind of come to the same conclusion, that Rails is really good at routing. HTTP works pretty good at, at, um, at determining what page you're on. And Angular, um, right here, uh, is is excellent at handling user interactions, right? So a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, rendering from Rails, a little bit of rendering from Angular, um, and just picking which you know whatever tool works at the time. And the, ne the next style is 
uh, something more like Ember, something closer to a single page app where you're doing all the routing in JavaScript, uh, all the rendering in JavaScript, and Rails is just the API. Uh, they're, both, uh, they're both fully um, viable styles, and they're both delightful. Uh, I, there's something about building out front end code that, that's so close to the users that I feel like it brings a, this extra sense of happiness, right? It makes me super happy to, to, to watch something magically update without a page refresh. I mean, that's, that's still so cool, right? Um, so I, I, I want us to have fun building cool stuff. And uh, I think we've canceled the test driving. Right. Yeah, we're, we're done with TDD, right? Okay, so. <laughs> Does anybody, like, full on, like, agree with DHH's keynote earlier this week? It, it's a, I, mean, I agreed it, with parts of it, all right? So, like, you're not alone. Uh, I agree with parts of it. Yeah. Most of it? Cool. Yeah. So. I, I, I agreed with, with, um, with a, a ton of it as well. It's, it's funny, because we have kind of two dogmatic, like, sides of the spectrum, right? Like, one dogmatic side is you have to test drive everything, right? Everything must be tested. Otherwise, you have to review. The other side now is TDD is dead. Don't test it. Like, I'm still of the opinion there's a pragmatic middle, and it's like 98% I think, of people and problems who see some value in testing. Right? Maybe it doesn't solve all of our problems, but maybe it actually does resolve a little bit more. Um, so that's kind of the area that we operate. Uh, I think what, when you watch that code today, you'll see that not everything is test -driven. Some things may be browser-driven, right? Sometimes I'm debugger-driven in my development, right? These are all viable, right? What we want is a short feedback loop so that we can produce a design that's both functionally correct and hopefully a little bit easier to maintain in the future for our future sets. So that's my take on TDD, so you will get some TDD today. But you can feel free to just say hell with it. Absolutely, it's, it's choose your own adventure. Um, yeah, and so I'd like to to, to view JavaScript through the same lens that we view Ruby. I mean, the, the same good practices that you do in Ruby um, just makes sense to also do that in JavaScript, right? Whether or not that's TDD, whether or not um, it's, it's following a, a style guideline. Uh, and, and all of the goals, right, is, is finding happiness, right? It's, instead of feeling like we're stuck with JavaScript, we have the option of, um, of embracing it and using it to, to delight other people and, and make our, our own lives like, a little happier, right? I mean, we have, we have the option to not hate it. Like, feel free to continue hating it if, if you do, right? Like, I, I don't want to take that away from anybody, right? right? Um, because there's plenty of stuff to be really angry about with JavaScript, but it's also possible to be a little bit happy with it. Uh, so what we're going to do now, um, uh, I'd like everybody to, to find a pair if you're not sitting next to somebody that you'd like to pair with. So, and, uh, and, and our, um, our, TA, our TA volunteers. And uh, once you get settled down and seated, go, uh, go ahead and attempt to pull down the repo. And if, uh, if there's Wi-Fi problems, we do have USB sticks up here. OK, the project has two folders. One is lineman start, and the other is static start. So uh, if at this point uh, you don't have lineman running, then let, go ahead and um, abandon it for right now. Um, and just work out of the static start, uh, the static start folder, uh, and and that's just uh, it's the exact same stuff. But rather than having uh, something automatically rebuild and link the files, it's it's old school. It's just static files uh, linked to your uh, linked to your drive. Um, so, right when you can um, try to get the uh, try to get the uh, page open, and that'll either be localhost eight thousand. Or opening the index.html file. All right, how do we feel? I'm gonna um, I'm gonna type some code on the screen. I'd like you all to follow along. Um, does anybody feel like that's panic-inducing and you'll never catch up if I start that now? Okay, I'll go ahead and start doing it. Um, so there's not gonna be um, there's not gonna be a ton of code like this. So don't worry. If so if you, fall, if you fall too far behind, don't worry. Uh, we'll catch you up later. And if it's really boring, then just, just go, feel free to shoot ahead on your own as a pair. Oh, and one more quick aside. There's also um, samples of, of the finished app, as finished as software ever gets. 
So, uh, so feel free to, to peek ahead and look uh, for syntax examples from that. All right, this, uh, this file's in the README. Uh, so every, uh, uh, every so often I get the chance to work with a designer. Obviously this is not the case. Um, <laughs> but it's really cool because I get mockups or prototype HTML pages. And then um, and from there, and, and even if I'm not working with a designer, I can make that myself and then mark it up with uh, what I think could happen with the JavaScript objects. So here, uh, I've, I've color-coded uh, the different chunks, right? the different concepts based on does it change after everything's gotten started or not. So the red is things that, are, that change, which is uh, the shots that are made, and the blue are the areas that uh, kind of stay the same. You know what, let me, let me really quickly uh, talk about what we're actually doing here. So we're, we're building Battleship, right? But it, it's, a really, um, it's a really simplified version where there's just one opponent. Uh, well, yeah, it's, there's one opponent who can't fire back, right? So, uh, right? so it's, it's essentially airstrikes, right? So think of it like watching CNN. Um, that got unexpectedly political. Um, so, so right now, um, like looking at the page, so we have the, the standard grid. Um, and if, if anybody is, uh, hasn't, isn't familiar with the, um, uh, uh, the old Battleship game or, um, or isn't, is a little uh, rusty on it, uh, I have uh, an excerpt from uh, Wikipedia right here as far as the broad outline. Uh, the, su the subset that we're going to be looking at is, once again, the, the airstrike version. Uh, where, uh, where we're just going to uh, enter in coordinates. I don't have this hooked up yet, so it won't do anything. Um, right, and then I'll hit fire, and then the status will update and let me know if I've hit, if I've hit the enemy ship or missed. Uh, the grid will light up um, and let me know, like, 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 um, so I can keep track there. And it'll also let me know if I've won. Um, so starting out, right, so... We've got uh, we've got the individual um, notes in the middle, right? Which and that's that's a domain term from Wikipedia because I, it's I find it's a good idea to research whatever domain I'm in so I can get the words uh, because I'm really lazy. Um, the th the thor the thorthus are hard to pronounce apparently, uh, and we also have status uh, and and note and status are both uh, they're both calculated. They both require the the changing data, so it would be really hard to do that server side. Uh, because uh, if, if, if we did, then we'd have to reload the page with every fire, which wouldn't be a very good game. Uh, the stuff in blue, that's, that's, those are things that aren't going to change after the game starts. So we could render that server-side, client-side. It doesn't matter, right? It's, it's, it's a, it, uh, uh, other considerations um, can, um, can take control of that. We're going to be uh, rendering the, the grid client-side just to keep things consistent, so that way we don't have to worry about... Uh, getting a Rails app bundle installed, but you know, in your own time, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so, um, so yeah, so, so we have uh, like pure mutation in red, um, pure static in, in blue, and the derived in purple. And feel free to reference back to that. Um, so from there, um, I'm gonna take a look at the code itself. Go ahead and close that. The lineman start. So I just I, so I just change directories into lineman start, and I'm going to um, change my color scheme there so people can read it. And I'm going to pop open the index.html page. Um, so and if you have trouble finding index date shop, uh, or general shape of the Wormley uh, neighborhood uh, TA, and they'll they'll uh, help you out. And if the TAs don't know, it's production uh, me. So, uh, so right here, we see the mustaches uh, uh, that's sitting right there, uh, like visible in the web page. So I, I, I left that there to start. So, just, um, so we always have something calculated showing in HTML. So if we break something, we, we get that instant feedback, right? So just like Todd said earlier, 
Uh, tests are really cool. Um, I, I like them a lot, but it's not the only way. So I put something breakable right there, and it's, al it's already broken. So uh, I'm going to throw this attribute into the body tag, right? Just ng app. So please feel free to do the same thing. And then if you refresh the page, suddenly one plus one equals two, right? All right. So now I'm going to. Um, so we need. Um, we need ad hoc functionality here. Uh, we need uh, more than just what the base uh, Angular temp templating provides. So I'm going to uh, tell it to look for uh, a module by the name of app, which is uh, super descriptive. That was sarcasm, sarcasm hat. So I'm going to refresh the page again, and we're broken, right? Uh, and it's because uh, I haven't actually declared the app yet. So, uh, so I'm going to open another file in called uh, app.js. Okay, so and if you're in lineman, it's it's um, you can see it's it's app.js app.js, and it's going to be a, in a slightly different folder in the static version. Is anybody having trouble finding app.js? If you are, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, one plus one is supposed to be two, not Okay, yep, it's not working for me either. Oh, okay. okay, so yeah, it's, it's supposed to be broken. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a feature. <laughs> it's a feature. Mustaches are in right now. Okay, so. Yeah. Just as a quick question. Please. Um, if, if I'm just, I, I often use app if it's something really small, but if I've got, if I've got multiple Rails routes, each with their own Angular app, then, then I'll name them so I don't, don't go insane. So, so here's how we, um, here's how we declare, uh, the Angular module. So theoretically, if I refresh this, it goes back to two, right? And, uh, the way uh, this, this syntax works, uh, Angular is just a, a word that's available in the global namespace because we have the library. Dot module um, is a method. And then when, when we pass a, a string as a first argument and a, uh, an array as a second argument, that's a declaration. Yeah, normally, um, if, if we had dependencies, then we would put them in there, right? So if I had a bunch of different Angular apps and and uh, one, um, one chunk of code that was, that was responsible for uh, the JSON API to talk to Rails, then I would put that, that JSON API chunk as a dependency. Oh, that's not a thing I want to do. OK. So all right, so we have uh, Angular up and running right there. Um, so our first, um, so our first uh, request, right? Is a um, is to essentially let the user know that they can fire. So I'm going to add a method call in here before I actually um, before I actually create the method. So it's so it's like DOM driven. So I'll just call this. Oh sure. Um, so if you um, so if if your um, if your body tag has ng app equals app. And you see angular.module app in app.js. Okay, and in theory, if everything's saved and refreshed, then then um, that shouldn't say two anymore. Well, well, it, that shouldn't say one plus one anymore. It shouldn't be broken. Okay, um, and and all right. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on. And, and once again, I'm the, I'm not going to go too far. We're not going to go too far in lockstep, so don't feel like you'll be left behind forever if if something isn't quite working. All right, so I just made I just um, called a function called status that doesn't exist, right? Um, actually, and I'm skipped a step, so I'm going to declare a controller. All right, and what this does it's just like a Rails controller. Um, each controller is responsible for passing uh, the view uh, different chunks of data. Um, so since this is fairly simple and I, I want to keep it as, uh, I want to keep the number of concepts 
as minimal as possible. We're just going to use one giant controller. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing this day to day. Um, so so uh, body has ng controller there. So I'm going to add a, uh, the controller to our Angular module just by chaining off of the module declaration. So dot controller. That was pretty awesome when it went off the screen, huh? All right, we'll just. Actually, what I'm going to do here is. Um, it, it, can, it can be off this one, too, but it's a good question. Um, so I'm actually going to, ah, this is fine for now. OK, so in theory, all right, so I, I saved everything off. I refreshed the page, and um, I'm not seeing any any of the mustaches. So, if you're seeing mustaches, then um, something went wrong. Okay, I'm so uh, I've got a little less space than I wanted. So, I'm going to just save this to a a, a, a variable, and so that way we get uh, line wrapping here. App. And and I and this is a minor change um, here. It's just whether you chain directly off of the module declaration up top or that controller. Um, the, the two are equivalent. Um, so our our scope name parameter is um, that's a, it's a bit of magic provided. So if we attach things to the scope, um, we can um, essentially uh, give the DOM. Uh, uh, bits of information that will automatically update. So hit uh, scope dot status equals function. Give everybody a second here. Here, clickety click. All right. And I'm going to pop back over here. And so and I've got my controller, and I've got a, and I've got st uh, a call to status. So in theory, when, it, when I pop back over here, it says, you may fire when ready. All right. So uh, next thing I want to show you before I cut you loose is uh, the ng repeat attribute. So that way, so if, if anybody's uh, played in Backbone but not a more modern framework, then you know the white hot pain that comes with attempting to render a list, right? Like, you'd think something that simple would be easier. Well, it kind of comes for, for free here. Um, so if I just say, so I'm just going to make an array available here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just verify that I know the syntax for how to do that. So I, I want to create the, I want to be able to render the column headers from, um, uh, from data. Uh, we've got a hand up in the back. So if we do, uh, so the columns are every uh, numbers, right? So I'm just going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, dot, split. This is JavaScript's version of an array literal, right? So we don't get, we don't have nice things. Um, yeah, Job, yeah. JavaScript's definitely reason, definitely the reason why we can't have nice things. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I'm just gonna say, um, so I'm gonna put in some mustache here and just say uh, thing, right? So it's, so so everything in the mustache is. Um, I mean, that's just JavaScript, right? Um, so, in, um, so I can just do, so I can refresh now, and that turns into two, because, like I said, it's just, it's just JavaScript. I can do, um, like, uh, like, I think I can even do, like, a, an alert from here, right? Right? I mean, I, I think this actually works. Never actually tried this for obvious reasons. Nope. That's fine. We don't want to do that anyways. 
<laughs> See, this is called experimentation. We're learning together. Okay, so, um, so since this is just JavaScript, um, it's not super handy because we want to do m more things than just add integers. So when we say, um, so, so say we put uh, this a ran like just a random uh, attribute on scope and set it to a string. And inside of our mustache, we just say test. And don't worry if you find follow if you if you don't quite uh, get every keystroke here. We'll, we'll be deleting it. It's it's just a matter of it's just a way for us to get information from JavaScript land somewhere into the browser, and it's just kind of it kind of works. Are we feeling a little better about scope here? Yeah, Go ahead. Oh. Um, it's um, so Angular doesn't use so Angular's templating system is the DOM, so that's just so it just it just looks for. Um, okay, so this isn't handlebars. These are just the two. Yeah, yeah there, there's two curly braces. That's, so it's a. I'm sure there's um, some kind of um, official term standard, whatever. But it's just um, it's uh, no different than ERB with the uh, angle brackets and the equals, right? And, um, and, and scope is no different than setting something to an instance variable inside of a Rails controller. Okay, so we can put anything on scope and, and display it. So we've got, we already have just an, like a plain attribute, um, which is um, just, just a value. And we've got, uh, we also have a function, which is also a value, but we've got the open and close parens. You know, in JavaScript, remember, always looking for the open and close parens because that means you're calling a function. And, um, uh, so, and, and so we can call anything from inside of here you know, from the scope. So I want to get uh, an array of column headers uh, so that way, uh, that way we can iterate over those. So I'm just going to say uh, column headers. If anybody thinks of a better name for this, let me know. I'm not super happy with it. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Dot split array literal JavaScript. Um, all right, and just delete test. And I'm just going to throw. Um, I'm going to throw the whole thing in here, just to make sure that like, the stuff's wired up properly. Yeah, so not super pretty, right? So yeah, we there we are. We displayed a list of stuff. Now we can go home, right? Yay! Yay. Um, so there's a neat. Uh, so this is the uh, magic Angular syntax for uh, displaying a list of stuff. Ng repeat. Um, I'm gonna set it equal to uh, thing in collection. Yeah. Uh, so our collection in this case is. Um, column headers, and our thing is uh, a column header, right? Sorry, let me see if I can get this ho this whole thing on the screen at once. Or if I'll jump. Ah, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. We'll just uh, and. So we have um, column header in column headers and a single column header um, inside, um, inside of that uh, ng repeat uh, element. So it's like a block variable in Ruby. So in theory, if I refresh here, so these are actually being displayed from our array and these over here are just the static bits from the HTML. Right, so I just so I just go I just went ahead and I deleted the rest of those uh, table those the rest of those uh, ths, and so all I have left is the headers that I can't get on the screen all at once. I've got to make this a little smaller, little smaller. There we are. Oh sure, and column headers. 
you know, the array literal. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and show the uh, click handler next. So this is the uh, this is the button element right here, right? So let's call this. Uh, so we, I want a, a method called fire. So. On the, bu on the button element, I just threw a, a uh, ng click called fire, or set an ng, attrib ng click attribute to fire. Uh, and I'm going to expose it here. Scope that fire, fire function. I'll just set an, an alert. see if this works for me, and then I'll go back and make sure. All right, so I'm not entirely full of crap right here. So we've got scope.fire here, and ng click equals fire there. All right, so how many people are completely lost right now? All right, all right, all right. What's that? All right. How many people? Are, how many people are totally bored? Way ahead. Okay. Are you? No, no. Okay. Okay. So let's let's get uh, let's get everybody caught up so they can uh, see the uh, click alert. All right. So we've got um, so you have the ng repeat uh, recipe. Uh, you've got the ng click recipe. Uh, uh, the the next recipe, the second to last recipe I'm going to give you right the second is ng model, which all this is saying is hey assign the thing that's inside of the text input field to a local variable called shot, and we're going to just pass that into fire. And I'm going to make the text a little smaller. Every, I'm slowly making everybody's eyesight better incrementally. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, and uh, back over in our controller, I'm just going to to um, change this to uh, to uh, take a name parameter called shop. Right, and it's just gonna uh, it's just gonna set an alert for the thing that's inside of the input. So once again. Uh, our click handler is called fire, which we expose by assigning it to the scope here. We're passing in uh, a local variable called shot uh, into the function here that it gets from uh, uh, that it gets from the input because we uh, are setting it via ng model. Um, so I'm going to see if I'm lying. Let's see if this actually works. Refresh. Don't forget to refresh. All right. All right. Um, eh, I don't know. It works. <laughs> so the the dirty secret here is I uh, I use as little as angular as little angular as possible because I, I like I just want to I want to keep the skills and the code as transferable as possible. So in in this case right here, um, it's uh, as, as far as we know, it's it's just assigning it to a local variable called shot that's visible in the view. So go ahead. Um, so the question was if there's any reason why I did it this way instead of just accessing it off the scope, and the reason is I, I want to um, I want to be able to I want to keep this function more uh, um, more pure. I didn't want to say it, but I will. So I, I wanted to be able to move this function away if I needed to, and if I just assume that it's available on the scope, then it's going to be a little bit harder. So it's because I'm lazy. That's why I'm passing it in. I saw a hand up, up in the back. Okay. All right, so uh, all right, so we've got um, so we've got uh, a shot, uh, an array, and um, and a status, right? 
So at this point right here, we've got two options. Um, I, can, I, can keep, I can keep showing you uh, different pieces of Angular and JavaScript, um, or I can cut you loose on, on the rest of it, because at this point, um, at, at this point uh, with these recipes, and knowing a little bit about uh, programming, um, like we, we can eventually like work our way through uh, uh, the requirements of the system. Okay, no, that's okay. So, so the next, all right. So here, so let me give us. So I'm going to give you a specific mission right here, right? Um, so right now, um, so here's what we'll do. Um, so I'm going to crack Keynote open. We're sending you on a mission. Hopefully it's not suicide, but if we lose some resources, you know. So I'm going, I'm, we're going to do 25 minutes working on this. So, uh, the, so what, I, what I'd like you to concentrate on first is just displaying uh, the square that we're targeting inside of status, right? Um, and you, you have, um, and, and, and you know, give it a shot for a little while. And if you can't figure it out after uh, five minutes or so, raise your hand. Uh, and you know, no big deal. This, this, stuff, this stuff is super hard. Um, uh, it is it is um, consider it is considerably harder than Rails, uh, just because uh, there's a lot more moving pieces, a lot more things resident in memory. Right, and my Hello World Rails uh, for the first time took a week. My first Hello Rail World, like like writing stuff back to the server in JavaScript took three months. Right, like there's a huge difference between these technologies. Um, but uh, so so mission one, um, just show like if I type A1, just show A1 in the DOM. And then mission two um, is going to be um, a little bit further along. Uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to make the status, the status show if we hit a ship or not, which means you'll need to determine if a ship is there. And once again, uh, try to work on it for a few minutes. And then as you, know, as you get stuck, because we'll all get stuck, just go ahead and raise your hand. Um, do we have questions before I let you loose? Go ahead. Why is status a function? What's that? Why is status a function and not a straight string? Oh, um, uh, personal preference. You feel free to make yours a straight string. Uh, any other questions? Okay, go ahead. Um, I'm going to set a timer for 25 minutes. All right, we're going to. Uh, all right, we're going to uh, uh, show a, a, a solution. Uh, see how far we got, and then I'll show you how to. Uh, how to go ahead and uh, extract f uh, and you know write some tests. Go ahead and hook it up. I think I misspelled YMCA. <laughs> Hypo, pull request. Thank you. Don't forget to uh, introduce yourself. Thank you, by the way. All right, we ready? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and roll. All right, uh, my name is Patrick. I'm from uh, Toledo, Ohio. Um, are you going to come up? Come on up. Come on. All right, uh, that's my 
uh, par partner Becky. She's from uh, San Francisco. So, yeah, quick, quick round of applause for you. Um, we initially couldn't figure out where the uh, ships were, and then we asked Zach, and he said there weren't any. So we uh, <laughs> uh, decided to uh, just create a, a little array to show where the ships would be. Um, uh, so we have that, and uh, down here in uh, the uh, fire um, function, it uh, takes the shot parameter, and then uh, JavaScript doesn't really have any good, like, function for checking to see if something's in an array. So we had to kind of whip this up to see if um, the input was indeed in the ships array, which is declared up here. And if it is, uh, it would, um, the target would be a hit. And if it's not, it'd be a miss. And then the, uh, the status function up here will uh, grab that variable and um, return it if it is defined. And uh, if you're just initially loading the page, it'll give you the uh, fire when ready. So um, A1 is one of the ones that does work. So uh, that gives you a hit. But A2 is not in the array. So that gives you miss. So that's pretty much it. solution is really close to what I came up with, so I <laughs> want to make sure to surround myself with people that agree with me. All right, uh, so what I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run through um, extracting some stuff. Once again, technical term out of the controller, so that way we can test it. Because we are because is, what, what time is it? Three o'clock. So figure. Uh, there's an hour left to go. It's a good time to uh, actually show how to do some tests. Would you mind that? Yeah, thanks. All right. So, so um, I didn't move this ahead any, so I'm, I'm still being kind of a bum here. So. Um, Right now, uh, scope has three things on it, right? And so long as it gets those three things, it, it doesn't matter where they live. So I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to uh, magically uh, pre-create some specs here, right? Um, and uh, anybody who stumbled across the, specs, the spec file already noticed uh, there's a failing one, right? Uh, so uh, if I take a look at the message, it says, uh, game is not defined. Am I, okay, I'm mirroring. I, for, for a second, I thought maybe I was giving an impressionist uh, a presentation here. Um, so so I, I, don't have, uh, I don't have game defined. So I'm just going to pop over to game.js. Um, and, and don't worry about following along lockstep. This is kind of uh, this is more um, an overview of how to go about doing it. So. Uh, so, in JavaScript, when you see a capital letter at the beginning of a function, uh, the, in your mind, make that a class. That's really saying class game, right? I, yeah. Not only can we not test for arrayness, we don't have we have no class. Uh, so, uh, I've got a style I like um, because I hate dealing with the with the this keyword um, after using it heavily for a year, I still mess it up on a weekly basis, so I'm trying to not use it as much as possible. Um, ah, old habits. All right, so, so what I'm do gonna do is um, take a look at my tests. Uh, so undefined is not a function, so if I take a look at the test, game.status, right? So game.status to be you may fire when ready. So I'm going to create a status function. And we're still failing, because undefined still not a function. Because uh, right here, uh, nobody in the outside world can see this function. Uh, but I really like function declarations. I, I tell people it's because uh, they get hoisted. So 
Um, it, so I can be a little less uh, careful about the order of the declarations. But in reality, it's because I don't need a semicolon. And uh, it, JavaScript almost looks like a programming language when I'm looking at function declarations. So it's, it's, honestly, it's aesthetic um, uh, as much as anything. But uh, I, I really like this pattern right here. So uh, self.status equals status. And so when I, so then I uh, explicitly make it public by attaching it to self. Um, so now we have a new exciting error. So we are, because we're returning undefined from our newly minted public method status. So uh, I'm just going to say uh, return thing. So it said expected thing to be you may fire when ready. So, OK, no biggie. You may fire when ready. And passing. So, come on, I had a passing spec. Come on. Yeah. Woo! All right, but uh, this isn't reality, right? Right, Because it's not hooked up to our DOM. So, our, our user interface is completely disconnected from our test. So, it's no good yet. Um, so, I'm going to take a look at the scope. Um, so, okay, I also need to implement column headers. So um, I'm going to go ahead and write this spec. I wasn't planning on, but I'll go ahead. Um, it, um, uh, I guess uh, column headers. Um, I just want it to break, right? Like, I just want it to break if, like, column headers goes away. Just, just like, that's, like, uh, like, just, like an extra bit of confidence. Uh, so I don't know. For right now. Like you don't need a like you don't need the perfect thing to test for. I mean sometimes you just need something just to get unstuck, right? Oh, and uh oh yeah, let's uh, let's keep that. We just get rid of the so uh expect Game dot column headers. Um, let's call it. Uh, let's just index into the second element. Uh, that way, I, we don't have to test a bunch of them, but we still have a pretty good idea that it's going to be uh, following the prop proper progression. I don't want to test length because maybe we can change the length later, right? Um, so. This I believe this is two. <laughs> this is one of those times when oh, can't read property one of undefined. Oh, that's right because I didn't actually make it yet. Um, so yeah, you know what? It's already made over here. So we'll just throw that here. And I like var up top. So this is uh, somewhere between um, uh, a revealing module pattern and a, and a uh, simple constructor pattern if you're into pattern-y type things. Um, so, and suddenly we're passing. OK, so we've got uh, three things on the controller and two of them under test. So I want to get fire under test as well. Um, and, and you notice that we're not. We're not breaking the DOM, right? It's like everything still, everything still works because it's, you know our uh, our highly advanced uh, battleship alerts are firing still. Uh, so, so we're not uh, we're not cutting and pasting. We're copying and pasting. And anybody that that will read a book on writing programs and retain information is not surprised by this. I was surprised by this. Katrina Owen just, like like showed a bunch of us at a class that uh, like how to refactor with not breaking things and it, it takes a lot less effort because you're not always fixing what you're breaking so even if I'm not under test I still like to kind of follow the same philosophy and copy and paste instead, instead of cut and paste okay uh, so I'm gonna, let's get fire ins now as well uh, Didn't write my test yet when I meant to, so fire. 
So I'll just not expose this to the public API yet and take another look at the specs. All right, so I already have this one uh, writ, written and such. Um, so I'm just going, I'm going to comment out this expect right here because, I, because uh, I'm not going to take the time to, um, to implement this quite yet. This is, um, this is more about uh, me being lazy and showing you uh, like, like how to pull this stuff out. Uh, so, yeah, so I just want it to not blow up at this point. So super, super stupid test to begin with because I just, I just want some level of confidence that I'm not going to break the user interface when I change my code, even when I'm not necessarily testing the user, user interface directly. Um, like, okay, so this is failing, so I'm going to just go ahead and put, uh, put fire on, like, make fire public as well. Dot fire equals fire. Right, and we're passing. Hey, that's gonna be irritating. Let's uh let's kill the alert. <laughs> well um we'll just make this uh eh, I'll keep it for a second. Hey, yeah, this is gonna be awesome. Okay. Um because what I commented out. How about that? Because what the next step here is taking a look at the controller. Um it's not controller, it's app.js. Um so we've got these three things. So I'm going to put a fourth thing. Game equals new game. Right, and theoretically, like, things should still work. Right, of course they work because I didn't actually change anything in the HTML. I didn't change anything in the view. So um, index.html. So I've got, um, I've got three things. I've got status, fire, and one other thing, column headers. So um, that should be on game now, right? So game.status. Let's see if this still works. Yep, that still is showing you may fire when ready. Um, so I'm going to do uh, game.fire. I'm going to temporarily. Um, oh, no, that is still going. OK. So in theory, so, so now we're no longer pointed at the controller. We're pointed at my function here that's still that's still popping up and the column headers and my column headers are still displaying so in theory my controller now looks like this if if it still works right so, yeah So I've been told that Angular has a really good testing story, and I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea. That's like that's reading stuff. I, I don't like words, right? Yeah, right. So, yeah. So since since Angular works really, really well with just JavaScript objects, in fact, that's the only thing it works with. Um, this is all I need in my controller, right? And then I can add functionality, and I'm not using Angular. And this is kind of this is the punchline right here. I can say this is my Angular app right here, right? Right, and it's it's one line. It's exposing the JavaScript we wrote to to Angular. And you don't have to write code this way. Um, it's perfectly legit to, uh, to to go through and use the Angular testing tools to to, uh, to get everything under test. But but boy, this is this is really cool. I, I uh, um, my uh, my pair and I uh, we moved an app from Backbone to Angular, and we we had uh, a ton of logic. Like, like in the front end because it was a Chrome extension. We didn't have any place else to put it. We didn't have a server. And we moved from Backbone to Angular, and we didn't have to touch 90% of the code, which was just like a cool par parlor trick. But I mean, the reality was it just made our, our lives easier the entire time. So I mean, this, this, is, my, this is why I like Angular, is because I, I don't have to use it. <laughs> like, yeah, that, that's, yeah, my Angular app right there. A lot of benefits that you still see, right? Like mm -hmm. two-way data binding and things like that. You could just, the good thing with this, though, right, is like, if you started to pull all of your logic into a game.js, what's to stop you from using Ember instead, right? Like what's to stop you from just maybe going with some jQuery or something like that? 
Right. What, what if you thought you had um, uh, an app shaped like, like this? Like you start out with an app like this, right? And, and this works really well, but it turns out that, that everything's going into a single view and more and more feature requests. And surprise, the app's actually about that one thing. Um, and then suddenly, you have something that fits this better. Like, and if, you, if you're completely married to Angular, um, I mean, you, you can do routing in Angular, but boy, so much nicer in Ember. Um, and, and, and you know, n not everybody's going to want to switch. There's, there's other uh, less flashy benefits, too. I just, I, I have a lot of, <laughs> a lot of battle scars, and, and I just find my life to be uh, moderately less painful when I make JavaScript, JavaScript projects. I just, I just don't care. care. You follow naming a lot, right? Like, instead of where we were operating under the Angular constructs, right? Like, we're creating controllers, we're creating modules. Now we're creating a game, right? Like, as you follow this, if you're cracking out on this this weekend, you'll probably create a ship. You'll probably create an opponent or something like that. All of those things stand on the road. And you can test drive those outside of line them, outside of the browser, whatever you want to do. Yeah. You're, you're not bound to it. When you make the decision that, look, my stuff is in a controller, and I'm going to have a game controller, I'm going to have a ship controller, I'm going to have an opponent controller, you don't have a lot of options on, on how you can test those things. Right? It's the angular way. Yeah. And, 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 and then all these sides, and, and if if putting, if if following um, something, something that you'd be more likely, likely to see in an angular tutorial is perfectly legitimate. Yeah, I was just going to make the argument that the same approach that you're talking about, just making classes and having them do a good single purpose thing, doesn't have anything to do with Angular or any of these other yep. things. It works really well in your Rails app, too. So if you have a lot of stuff in your controller, well, you can pull that stuff out in the same way. Yeah, right. It used to be like, hey, we want skinny this, but fat that, or yeah. whatever, right? Like, it's bullshit. We want skinny everything. Yeah. Right? Like, that's what we want. We don't want anything fat. That's a smell that we learned. Bad. So I think the Angular side, if you leave everything in there, it leads you to having better functions, better objects. Um, here we have freedom to decompose as we see fit. And, and it, it really is all about flexibility. I mean, have you ever regretted pulling logic out of a controller? Sometimes, I mean, it. Help me out. No, no, no. On occasion, <laughs> it has to be great. But, you know, like, more often than not, it's not, it's a lot more testable and a lot more approachable. Yeah. yeah. Nuance, right? Absolutely. Um, and, and and if um, if it's difficult to structure your code like this, I mean, this isn't this isn't the answer, right? I'm not I'm not um, like, I'm not selling. Um, it's not a law. Right. It's not it's not a law, right? <laughs> this isn't a diet. This is just a neat trick that that really blew me away by Angular that that I that I enjoy. Okay. So uh, we've got about another half an hour or so. So I figure. Uh, let's uh, let's do some more stuff. So uh, before, uh, so any other questions, comments? Am I full of shit? I mean, yes. Oh well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so this is the final set of uh, of stuff to to get it as far as I did in the. In the uh, uh, in the final folders, so uh, feel free to you know work on that for the next half an hour if you want or or uh, not. So uh, cool, thank you.